In 2019, New York State passed what is arguably the most aggressive climate-related policy in the country, committing the state to ambitious decarbonization goals, including a carbon-free electric system by 2040. A transformation of this magnitude requires careful planning to maintain the reliability of our electric system. With some significant engineering and future infrastructure challenges for which we do not yet have solutions. In addition, as we work to meet the mandates outlined in the state's climate change policy, we face yet another more immediate challenge. The unpredictable impacts of climate change itself on the electric system. Welcome to the Grid of the Future video series. This is episode four, Preparing for Climate Change. In this episode, we discuss why we launched our landmark climate impact study, what the key findings were, and how this data will inform the work we do as we prepare for a greener grid. In various regions of the country recently, flooding, severe forest fires, and extreme heat and cold have compromised grid reliability and resilience, and the effects have impacted the health, safety, and welfare of society, as well as the economy in those regions. You know, when you think about um, losing power, it's an inconvenience for some people. Um, for some uh, companies, even losing power for five minutes has severe economic costs to their business. And then, of course, if you look at something like what happened with uh, the hurricane that blew through Texas, or the um, cold weather event that blew through Texas um, last year, we, people died because they didn't have power. And so there are real human costs and economic costs when we have disruptions in power. And so better quantifying both the costs and the benefits will help us make the case that speaks to the question about, about whether it's worth it to make these investments. New York is no stranger to extreme weather. In recent years, Hurricanes Sandy and Ida caused widespread damage impacting our economy and way of life for days reminding us of how dependent we are on a functioning electric system. We need only look to the severe weather events that have impacted other states' energy systems in recent years to understand that, in addition to the planning and investments necessary to tackle state climate goals, we also must plan for the unpredictable forces of nature and more frequent extreme weather. Our stakeholder in New, New York City actually came approach with not with NISO and all our stakeholders and saying, "Well, climate change is coming. What is NISO doing about it?" At the end, we were able to come up with a scope and with enough stakeholder support to have a multi-phase climate change study to start digging into the impact that could come up to New York system. That's precisely why in 2019, the New York Independent System Operator issued the first phase of its multi-year climate change impact and resilience study. The NISO was the first grid operator to take this long-term comprehensive look at the ways climate change and clean energy policies combined may impact the grid over the next 20 years. With the changing climate, there are changing, obviously changing temperatures, but changing weather patterns and and most importantly, changes in the severity and frequency of storms that can disrupt reliable power supply. So one of the things we, we did was to look at um, what do those changes look like um, based upon analysis of, of how the climate may be changing in New York State over the time period between now and 2040. And the second one is the related to the requirements in the CLCPA around changing resource mix. By 2040, the resource mix has to look extremely different than it does now, with huge amounts of wind and solar and battery storage, additional transmission. Uh, the system itself looks vastly different than it does now. The study found that a greater reliance on intermittent resources such as solar and wind power, including offshore wind, presents a fundamental challenge to the grid. Reduced output from wind lulls, which can last from hours to weeks and impact how much electricity can be produced from wind power generation, could increase reliability risks. The study also looked at New York's plans to decarbonize through electrification, including the growth of electric vehicles and electric building heat. 
Electrification is expected to change the traditional patterns of electricity consumption and power flows in the state. A key takeaway that we found in our analysis was how difficult it is to operate a system that has that level of variability within it. Um, and this is even, even given the fact that we built into the resource set 15,000 megawatts of, sto of battery storage capability. So I, one of the most significant um, things that came out of the study from my point of view is that when you imagine a world that's fully decarbonized or an electric system that's fully decarbonized and reliant so much on these variable resources, uh, it's very, very difficult to operate the system reliably in the way that it's operated today. So what that highlights is the need for um, some type of resource that's a, that has the characteristics needed to manage that level of variability in the system. We need to understand and plan for these implications and how weather changes could impact supply and demand. When we look at what's happening in other states like Texas and California, I mean, what we see is, you know, an abundance of uh, other resources that are intermittent and also uh, extreme weather situations and uh, generator outages. And so when you have a reliance on all of these things and then in turn you have multiple failures, I mean, that is exactly what we're worried about of what if that happened in New York. The study was clear. Our current system is heavily dependent on existing fossil fuel resources, and replacing this generation will require innovation. I think there is a lot of hope that at some point between now and 2040, the technologies that will be needed will emerge, but it re will require a lot of work. Key attributes that are needed for 2040, you, you need to be able to respond to the variability in generation. Today, we're used to just conventional generation that's there when you need it, can run flat out, uh, in the future, that won't necessarily be the case. So, you know, you're relying on the wind, you're relying on the solar, and the wind's not always going to blow and the sun's not always going to be shining. So you need uh, other attributes on the grid able to respond to that. And that includes uh, quick response, ramping capability is what that's called. So b the ability to increase the output out of generation very quickly on a moment's notice. Our grid planners use information like the climate change study along with many other models and factors, to prepare the grid for future changes to demand, pointing out where investments on the system are most necessary. There are not simple answers, but that doesn't mean that there aren't answers that we can work toward. That's part of the role that we take most seriously here at the NISO. It's seeing that, that technical challenge and bringing together uh, the employees of our organization working with all of our partners in this transformation and figuring out those answers. We have to have the confidence that we will be able to work through these challenges and responsibly transition the power grid to continue to serve New York, to be reliable, and by doing so, not only will we achieve the environmental objectives that we need to be successful with, but we'll continue to have and continue to enjoy the reliable power grid that we all have come to expect. By modeling the combined impacts of both extreme weather and a grid that runs primarily on clean energy, we've identified key reliability gaps that must be resolved to fully achieve our decarbonization policies. The climate change study performed by the New York ISO has identified a path forward that maintains system reliability on behalf of all consumers. <laughs>